So you want to build great nature and premium in the year 2024, but you're not a big fan of big belly, big belly, no G stuff, Leopold. Well, I have the deck for you and that is Hamskate and Premium. However, it uses D plant token makers to kind of help the game plan of being aggressive while being combo based. This is a deck that builds very wide and can get very tall with some of its strides. The deck uses the Hamskate engine from the V series to thin the deck very hard while using D plant token makers to kind of give us an aggressive front by buffing them up with cards like Cyclone and also buffing up our units early on by using cards like Sypticom to basically give crest numbers on the early turns and then using our win cons to using all our flipped up units with Sypticom to be, give big power to the front row. This Hamskate token deck is a deck I've played for a while. I started brewing this when D set five came out and we got Prod Pollen, which is in the deck right now. And the grade one made as seen here that we will never talk about for the rest of this video because this card's bad and Rosarium coming out reignited the spark to play this deck. When I first brewed this deck in 2022, roughly. Uh, it was way more bricky back then, so it was very much like gimmicky, like don't even bring it to a local level kind of deck. Just, but with the introduction of Ride Fixer and just better plant token makers, so there's like less bad cards to run in the deck. Deck today functions relatively better. Right now, the deck is in a really good spot, but when I first came up with this deck, it did have the lethality of get two excels turn three that's less of a flex now just because of history collection coming out however this deck still kind of has this potency of you get two excel markers but you get to pick what stride you want to go into so you don't have to ha run this sad little guy you can run buster in my biased view i believe hamskate is the better great nature deck right now i know it's not like a crazy race because great nature is objectively the worst clan right now the deck does have a lot of things going for it just because its main combo pieces is open a token maker. That's all you need. Now, and you're not locked behind GB and you don't need re-standers because a body on the board is all you really need with this deck. And you thin a lot by making bodies on the board. Deck is more aggressive and deck has a really good grade two game and just a good ride up turn just because two Excel markers, two, at least three attacks. If you have token maker, you have five attacks so on and so forth. Compared to Big Belly where it uses Restand Belly and Crayon Tiger where it needs its game plan and you need to see your Rhino and you need to see Forbidal to have more potency in your turns and you have to only go into Parrot. It gets real real thick real easy. Whereas Hamske, your deck is really thin. Like you can get 10 plus cards out of your deck very quick. The one big downside is you do lose on draw power that normal Great Nature has like Big Belly having the end phase with the V Belly or just like red texts and uh, the loss of Miki Saburu to find great threes out of the deck and just like cards like Crown Tiger that do draw us cards. The deck does lack card draw. However, it's more of a cycle deck. So here's the deck. Wow. That's a good deck right there. <laughs> I'm proud of my, my craftiness here. Ooh, <laughs> real nice. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the key card you see in here and kind of just like go over like why is it here um some of these might be no does to you but like you know i just want to be in depth with this just so everyone kind of understands this so the first card we're going to look at is just hamske himself it's it's the card it's why we play this deck over the cool panda he's the main engine of the deck just because he thins out really hard by basically giving you two draws getting the two hamskes out so you're, you're thinning your deck, your deck by four, and then you're doing twin drives, so you're down to six cards out of deck by the end of turn three. Really good potency just out of one card alone. And then with the rest of kind of the Hamske name locked package, you just kind of thin your deck harder. The one weakness by using the Hamske engine is if someone is out rushing you, which is possible with the scary counterpart to Paul If you don't have cards in hand, you will kind of lose. Hand is your resource. It is, it is still great entry, even though I say it doesn't need as many combo pieces like Big Belly. However, you need hand regardless. Um, so sometimes you have to make sacrifices with what you want to discard so you can get your bodies on the board for your Sypticom turns. Because without Sypticom, deck isn't going to fire on all cylinders. Next up, it's Prod Pollen and Rosarium Fairy. These are really good cards for the deck. They're the almost the glue of the deck. Because without them, it's just a Hamske deck and just a Hamske deck in premium doesn't really work. Rosarium Fairy and Prod Pollen are our, basically our biggest resource engine. This deck, the main resource of this deck is Soul 
and bodies on the board. These two cards really help us for turns where we go into Fernigus, the Owl Stride. Also enable Sypticom to kind of help us get more cards flipped up to help the game plan of killing the opponent by turn three, four, five, six. They are our mid battle attacks, so they are almost protected from denial griffin effects just because you can't stop a vanguard attack and they're bodies that can't get hit before the vanguard attacks. So they're really good for just attack extension or just kind of saving your turn if you do get hit with that, like if you lose your Hammonds, which are bigger attacks. One big benefit from this deck that I didn't mention earlier is enablers for this deck are in the G zone. So compared to Big Belly, which is our main comparison in this video, all your pieces are in the main deck. You still need to see all your cards. Whereas Hamskate, the pieces that you need to win the game with, they're in your G zone. You have them at all times. Our first stride of the deck that enables everything, Sypticon. The way you play this card, it's you first stride into it every time and you basically play it like a bustard. But instead of kind of managing resources that I see some Nova Grappa players do, just kind of getting as many like five, six drives, kind of leaving it there. This deck, fire all cylinders, soul blast everything because you want to flip up as many G units as you want. On an average turn with this deck, counting Sypticon when he goes there at the end of the turn, you're going to have five units face up. And this number does matter. This gives us really good early pressure. Um, kind of dish back. Um, however, it, it should do well because it's more aggressive. Uh, Sypticom also has prop has its uh, anti-retire properties of kind of bot decking cards. Uh, so case scenario is where we go into the second Sypticom stride. We'll kind of flood our hand with triggers and be able to get them back in the deck. That's kind of what the plan is. Bot deck triggers on the final turn, which is the second Sypticom. What, what are the other combo pieces in the deck? I'm sure you already know. It's great nature. Everyone knows what great nature does. Right, guys? Tell me in the comments. So next up, it's Cycloned. Uh, if you've ever played Premium, you know why Cyclone is good, because Katrina is a good deck. We love Katrina, so we play great nature instead. <laughs> uh, the deck runs three Cyclones just because everything in our G zone kind of has to be there. If if I could go to four, I would go to four. However, three is fine, especially when a plant token's on an Excel marker. It's 20, they're 25s, and the, so they get through one defensive, which is not optimal, but okay. Uh, so Cyclone, that's all I really need to say about it. You're never striding into it. Next up in our kind of enable package, the last part of the enable package, really, it's Arum. Uh, in big belly decks, and just kind of decks in general, people go into this if they don't really have anything else to do, just because the mill four thins the deck, kind of, and you kind of get benefits like giving 10Ks or getting drives to kind of give you more cards. Uh, you never stride into this, period. You only want it for the G zone effect, which is when your Vanguard attacks, you can soul blast one call card from your hand. Welcome to the main combo of the deck. Without Aram, this deck doesn't really work just because we need, we want our plant token makers to come out during the battle phase. There isn't much else to say about this card. It's just the con about this card is you do want to soul blast everything for the Sypticom turn so you can get as many G units face up. So we'll have some soul chargers to kind of show later. However, the one neg is it is a soul. Balleroll is our main win con of the deck. Uh, we go into it turn four and five. On paper, this is our, this is our win con. Um, so after we do our Sypticon Buster turn, we have five face up in the G zone. Let's say we did one G guard, so we have six in G zone. With Ballot Earl, we have seven in the G zone. That's 28 to the front row, so we're kind of packing a heavy punch. He does give red text, so any plant tokens on the front lose 15k. However, you get plus 20k in return, so you're not really losing on much. Could it be higher? Wish we could. However, we're still hitting, you know, we don't have to worry about rewriting because it's Hamsky, so we have the two Excel circles. So we're gonna have four cards that have the draw effect. And we want one soul for the RM play. So we're kind of hitting a lot of numbers. So the opponent's either gonna take a bunch of hits and let's us draw cards, or they're gonna try to guard our big attacks and just let our, our pokies happen after the mid battle arm call. We're going back to the main deck here just because this card had to go last. This is the pivotal card to the entire deck. If you don't open this, you're losing the game. And that is Hamskay's Teacher. <laughs> Without Hamskay's Teacher, the deck is very bricky. He is the sole reason why we run Ride Fixers. He is the sole reason this deck kind of can exist because of its deck thinning capabilities. If you go first, you're deck thinning two by getting grade one Hamskay, which gets you grade two Hamskay. But if you go second, you get those two deck thins, you get a drive check, and you have two attacks that are 
fairly okay. You don't, you're not really spending anything. Like, especially if you go second, you ditch quick shield. So you're not losing any resources. If anything, this gives you a really good grade one rush with cards like mini belly. And if you really want to commit hard, Rosara Imperial. This card plays a lot like a crest deck where if you don't open it, you kind of lose the game or just in an uphill battle. However, the neg from this is a lot less, but you need to commit more because it's either you need to open with a grade one hamskate and another grade one, or really hope you draw a grade two hamskate on turn two and have a grade one hamskate to kind of get him into soul. So it kind of gets janky from there. This guy really evens out the, the wrinkles. And now the rear guard ability, it doesn't come up too much because we don't use a lot of CB. However, sometimes, you know, CC's nice. Uh, the main part of the rear guard circle, because it does come up, is you want to avoid deck out. And this card helps you avoid deck out by bot decking primarily himself and Hammonds in the drop zone. But if you have to bot deck normal Hams case, that's okay too. Those were our key cards to the deck. Without them, you need to play these cards. If you don't have these cards, uh, you don't really have the deck. So if you do want to pick this up, make sure you have these cards. So now these are other cards in the deck. If you don't have them, it's fine. These are the more these are more optimal. However, if you don't have them, it's fine. Try to find a replacement. Um, but I'm going to tell you why they're in the deck and kind of so you know what to look for if you need something else. But it's great nature. Everything's relatively cheap. Um, so first off, we're going to go to... His name's not Hammond. His name's not Hammond. I've said it wrong this whole video. Hamskate's rival, Rocket Pencil, Ham... Hamdon. Hamdon. I need you guys to know this took me like five tries to get his name right. I've said it wrong so many times. Hamdon, he's, he's our best beat stick in the deck. Uh, it's also one of three Soul Charge cards in the deck. If I could play him at four... I would. His good properties is we don't really CB, so that CB is basically a free resource. Uh, this deck cycles a lot, so kind of putting a card from hand into soul is a lot better than soul charging. If this card just plain soul charged, it'd be a lot worse. This also really helps us with our token makers mid battle phase from our Arum calls, just because he becomes a 22k, which is really strong, and it also helps Rosarium Fairy and Prod Pollen be good attacks because they don't get Cyclone buff. So Rosarium Fairy is an 8 to 13k, but with Ham Don. It is a 23, which is still good if a defensive gets hit. Uh, same with Prod Pollen. This is the worst card in the deck. Uh, however, you need it to find the best card in the deck, and that is Ride Fixer. Ride Fixer does Ride Fixer things because Ride Fixer fixes your rides. I've kind of tried to do the boost skill, but because it's a soul, you kind of get the idea. You, you know, uh, we can't really use the skill, and even then, the skill's not that good for what we're doing with the deck. Um, if the retire would be nice, but if we get stuck with a normal unit, the 5k doesn't super matter. So really it's kind of, we lost a soul to do something. Also this deck, even though it's running a lot of like grade ones and tokens, boosting is not like the craziest thing we want. That's just mainly because everything kind of goes to front row because our main boosters are tokens and they go to the front for more attacks. However, we do need this card for Hamskay's teacher is also really prime discard fodder for Hamskay, uh, which is really good just because sometimes discarding two is a really heavy cost, especially if you got uh, rushed down really early. I typically like to save him in hand if I know I'm getting rushed and being able to discard with it. Another thing with the ride fixer is it is good for Galarl and Fernigus for uh, having a body on the board. Again, a body is a resource in this deck and it's honestly more valuable than soul. So sometimes you just want to call one down just to kind of give it the 4k forever face up and potentially draw a card, or it's a it's a draw counter charge soul charge from Fernigus. This is a quick entry, grade three searcher in the deck because your only way to specifically find grade three hamscape. The kind of hamscape package in V sucks because uh, I'm not gonna commit one CB for a top three or a CB and a soul blast to top two mill one, put one to hand. That's not good at all. Um, also, Grade three searcher, 13K, 18K. Now we're on trigger units. Uh, this is our second of three soul charge cards. This is Curious Pony. He's a cool guy. Goes to soul, draws you a card. It's a cycle. Cycle's good. Um, I kind of thought I had more to say about this. However, it's just he is one of the few cards that soul charge that help the deck out. And so one thing with uh, this card and Hamdon, they're also kind of help you enable flipping more cards. You want to get the five total g zone so you're going to flip four times hamske you have three soul available so you kind of need to open one um now mind you it's okay to flip three on average want to get four face up with septicom but it's fine however these cards are really strong especially with hamdon because he is accessible 
like from turn three because it's a, it's Hamske, we have the two Excel circles. But with these cards, they do enable you to get full potency, gives you cycle, gives you more power for the turn. Next up is Automatism Koala, Acoustic Koala. <laughs> this is our last of three cards that do soul charge in the deck. I do value the soul a lot in this deck just because for full potency, you have to soul blast everything. So you're trying really hard to kind of keep things going for you. Luckily, you only need one soul kind of a turn. If you go into battle roll, it's really easy to get two soul just because we have the three Hamdons and the four Kiri's pony kind of help out. Next up, boo, it's red OT. Uh, red OT, it's OT. So, you know, who, who cares? Who cares about this guy? However, I do want to talk about uh, why would you red OT over any other? And it's just because it's a wide deck, so more attacks, good. I, I believe Great Nature should go red OT. Blue OT is not that good just because there's no real card we need to get out of drop because we run eight plant token makers. So we're not really like stripped on like, oh, I really hope I open one. And the only reason we don't do Bless Favor, even though it kind of gives us more pressure by being the only front in the deck, uh, drawing two can kill us. This deck, it deck thins like crazy. So any extra draw, could be fatal if you don't time out how big your deck is. Cause one con of the deck is you are always on a deck out clock from turn three with how hard you deck thin. Next up, it's uh, the savior of Big Belly. Ah, look at him in a worse deck. My deck is better at, at all and always possible. He wishes he were that good. Caladrius is our worst stride in the deck. Um, however, it is um, our like, soul charge deny stride um it's the safest thing to go into just because most most of our strides needs a soul blast or just it they're already flipped uh Calandrius, it's okay it's just primary flip fodder however you only flip it up during uh the second septicon play which we'll go over later this card is relevant just because plant tokens do hit 30k now disclaimer before you already know if i give triple door to a plant token it will lose cyclone power but the way the card is phrased the plant token will still get the restand and the red text. It's when it gets the red text is when it loses the power. So it'll be a 20K with triple door. The 10K but force retire isn't really a neg. It's plant tokens in the front. Caladrius, not that crazy, um, but he'll, he'll come up if you don't open a Hamdon or a Curious Pony on time. It's kind of whatever. Every G guard I'm really into in this deck. Um, however, Al Mirage, I want to bring up in particular just because it is kind of the fringe card. I know it's a lot better if I had Honolly in the deck. Uh, it's a lot better uh, just because it kind of saves Big Belly Restanders. Um, however, in this deck, just because like a body is a body on the board, there's no like, I need this card to live uh, type of deal. Uh, it doesn't really come up much. It also costs a soul. However, every now and again, it can come up. Um, however, it's like really fringe. Um, I more than likely want to get this Peacock that counter charges. However, they're kind of interchangeable with me right now. Um, but you know, this card does have more applications. Maybe there will be a reality where I need to protect my rear guards. However, I don't really see myself playing anything from hand from this. Another thing is the turtle G guard that lets you draw a card is better. So Al Mirage is kind of anti-synergistic in that way. Um, so it's kind of just like give or take of if I want Al Mirage or the Peacock. Main combo of the deck. Um, we're gonna go over two. Uh, one of them is tried and true, uh, just cause I played this deck a lot when I first built it when it was way more bricky. However, I know this does work. And we have another combo that I haven't really had a chance to play. Um, however, it's more of a concept that I have in mind that should work if need be, just cause we know how good kind of late game crest jet numbers get. The main win con, you ride Hamske by having the optimal conditions to get the second Excel mark uh, circle. And then you stride into Sipticom Either if you're going first or second, doesn't matter. Again, deck has a grade two game. Deck has a good ride up turn. If it goes first, you just, you want to sip to calm first, period. Um, so the ideal kind of thing is you want to swing uh, your ham skays and your any, any other attacker you have on the board. Flip up your G units. Um, my typical pattern is a cyclone, then an arm just to remember. So I remind myself to flip Aram. In the past, I've forgotten. Like this is when like the deck, when I was first learning the deck. One one thing with the Septicom turn, the first one is you don't need to Aram, but if you think it would be good pressure, you can Aram, you just kind of have to account for, you're gonna lose a flip, but it might be good early game tempo, which is totally justified. As we see, we have 
four five face up in the G zone now as the turn ends. So we're we're at a good pace and tempo. And then the next turn, we're gonna take a bit of damage because usually we're not gonna have a lot of defensive kind of in our hand. We might have a G guard. Uh, the turtle's really good if we want to draw a card, get more cycle. It is our big G guard, uh, which is nice. The deck does have good big G guards, which I no kind of noticed. Second stride turn, Ballot Earl. He'll get big. We'll have at least 24k to the front row. And hopefully we kind of do good damage with that. Um, it might be bigger with G guards. Um, so it's kind of just by turn two, you're kind of really hitting hard just because you're kind of hitting for like better numbers. And so hopefully the opponent will be whittled down really hard or you just get more resources out of it because you're drawing off of Ballot Earl's red text. Now the secondary combo is the second Sipticom turn, which I kind of mentioned a couple times throughout. Same game plan, whereas you do your first Sipticom turn, you get your four or five on average uh, face up but the pivot is if you need cards in your hand you go to Fernigus instead of Ballot Earl. Fernigus makes the bodies on the board a weird resource of you get to draw and soul charge a lot so if you're kind of getting where I'm saying is you're gonna have four five six seven bodies on the board that's seven soul charges. You do your Fernigus turn be mindful of any deck out that happens because if you have seven units that's 14 cards out of deck from your really thin deck already. Uh, so just kind of be careful with your Fernigus timing and how many bodies you do want on the board. Use Rosarium Fairy to kind of clean up a little bit. So yeah, do your Fernigus, Fernigus turn, you get a really big hand, and hopefully you drew a lot of triggers. Now for the second Septicom turn, uh, this is kind of where the bot decking really comes into play, because hopefully you drew a bunch of triggers from your very thin deck, because you're going to have like, at max, maybe like nine cards if you barely thin with this deck especially after a Fernigus. The main plan is to, you want to call down all the triggers you want. And one key thing is you should hope you have a grade three searcher because it's your only way to kind of shuffle the deck. The main plan is hopefully have Hamdon or some way to kind of draw cards from your deck and then bot decking your cards um, early on by like calling any extra normal units you do want out to bot deck some cards earlier. And then you grade three searcher to shuffle and then as simple as that. And then with Second sip to calm because you have more, you G guarded a couple more times, you had Fernigus, you have the five face up from the first stride turn, gonna hit bigger numbers. Like I've ended games in test hands where I'm hitting late late game jet numbers. And I'm like, I've had hands where I've been able to get my entire G zone face up. So in theory, because it isn't just a theory, this line should be a good alternative if you kind of need to wait a little bit. Now, deck's still aggressive, so you kind of need to be done quicker. Uh, however, you do kind of do okay by kind of living or dying by the aggression. So um, sometimes taking that Fernigus turn will save you in the long run. Now that you have all the information, you have the deck list and kind of an idea of what card the card pool looks like to put in this deck. Here's some pros and cons to the deck. Pro, you're playing Great Nature. It's a cool-ass clan. Uh, I like animals. Animals are cool. Hamsters are pretty cool. Another pro that a lot of people enjoy in this game and any other card game is deck thinning. And this deck, deck thins really hard. I kind of talked about it throughout here. Hamskate takes four out of the deck. Two of them are selective. Grade one Hamskate teacher is gonna thin you by two. Deck thins really hard and you're drawing like great nature. However, it's in this case, it's more of a cycle. So if you really like deck th thinning, this deck is very good for you because you're doing it extra hard. Another pro is this is a crest deck just straight up. You have to open the grade one you need to get your deck going. And with Septicom, you are hitting late game jet numbers if you go into the second Septicom turn, which is the alternative win con to this deck. Uh, so if you wanna swing big, 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 this deck's for you because we build wide and relatively tall. This one's more of a meme. Wholeheartedly, this is a meme. However, if you're in a matchup where like, it's bad, like you don't wanna be there anymore, Fernigus, is a suicide button for you so if you want to be done with the game and be funny about it you have there's that's a pro you want some funny moments fern guess yourself <laughs> now one thing i really like about this deck is it lacks cb consumption compared to other decks where it's like dying for counter charge whereas our cb is relatively free because we'll be taking damage and hamdon's always going to be on basically fernigus cbs however he refunds himself and he's like the best counter charge for the deck one benefit from the not a lot of CB consumption is if you get hit with a Honolly, you don't CB a lot. So Honolly kind of doesn't do anything against you if the opponent does the remove effect. The deck does lack retire, so it's kind of hard if they know leave it on the board. However, if they do remove it from the board, it's more of a win for you because you could just swing through the Honolly and 
you're doing about eight attacks so three cb even though it's a lot in like every other deck in this deck it's not a lot especially if you are gonna if you understand your meta and knowing who has Honolly, what decks have Honolly, so you can choose when to use your prod pollens and not use Hamdon, etc. This deck, compared to other Great Nature decks, is it does have a really good Grade 2 game because of the tokens it has, as we've seen in Neonectar, where Grade 2 gaming can be really good because token calls are super free, especially even in clans like Great Nature, where it's not even built around having tokens. However, the Hamscape package is also just really good because you just spawn your guys for free. Uh, grade 2 Hamscape already feels good on, on your, if you're going first, being a 12k against an 8k and with a token it's a better booster so you're asking for more guard early on uh prod pollen works rosar and fairy works this deck is really good because you're not locked behind gb or late game card effects and you already want to lay out enough aggression early on because this deck wants to win quick and being able to grade two game like it does really helps it in these situations this deck just like big belly is kind of a turn four five six deck um but along with its early game uh but one benefit compared to big belly is just this doesn't really need all the combo pieces every card to combo piece as i've said uh, i just need to reiterate because that is so huge for this deck all your cards are combo pieces you just need to open a plant token maker um, whereas big belly you know you have to find like the three correct cards have the right ride to get your excel markers maybe open the forbidal for more deck thinning it's you're asking for a lot and even though great nature draws a lot big belly really got hurt by the spangled hit and that's another thing big belly is very gb locked whereas we're just kind of hitting the ground running a big thing to mention even though it's not like the craziest thing in the world is this deck compared to the other decks um hamskate and leopold uh didn't really get hurt by the spangled hit just because like they don't really care about that uh leopold probably cares a little more but this hamskate deck uh, back when, because I used, to, I had Spangled in this deck before, and I never went into it because it just never felt good. Because this is a cycle deck and not a plussing deck, um, which is kind of weird to say out loud for Vanguard in particular. However, just if you have your pieces, you you're already good, yada yada. So this deck is in a better position than the other Great Nature decks be, because it didn't really lose a card in the deck. Now for the cons, you know. It's not a good deck. This is a cope deck. However, it has a lot of promise as a cope deck. The main con, you're playing Great Nature. This clan sucks. <laughs> I like this clan a lot. This clan sucks. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're never taking this to a regional. I don't even know if this deck is ready for BSF um, in a normal format. We don't like tri reg around here. But at the local level, this, this deck is really fun. However, it is Great Nature, so you're kind of just going to lose the usual suspects. Uh, you might win games just because aggression's better. However, it's Great Nature. Another con, even though I, I've been harping that this deck is really fast, um, in some matchups that might form walls around you, like let's Chaos, they're going to wait you out. Um, it You know, the... Being a combo deck, uh, first and foremost, might hurt because this deck wants to be done quick. And if a deck can stabilize really well against it, you're probably going to lose to it or just have a, the most uphill battle, battle of your life. Uh, you might have to conserve your Sypticon uh, flips, which really hurts this deck. So just knowing your matchup is really important with this deck. However, uh, sometimes just combo can't work because the deck the opponent is already just kind of there has their hand is a wall now this one con to the deck everyone knows it they they probably been screaming it i better see a comment of someone already saying this before they got to this part so they look silly uh if you type it now it's not funny and i'll know however this deck really loses to defensives uh your plant tokens which is the main attacker are 20 and 25 k's based on excel circles uh so you know two defensives really hurt this deck even for being the wide strategy it is um fronts would really counteract this however as we kind of explained it's kind of hard to justify them right now um we kind of know the route we want this deck to go so in the future this might not be as bad of a con uh however it is important to note just because like plant token makers of prod pollen rosarium fairy aren't going to be that big unless hamdon's on the board hamdon loses to defensives so just two defensives kind of turns his deck off so it's really hard even one defensive is detrimental just because it becomes a bunch of 5k guards unless you're on Sypticom or bala earl 
Uh, so it kind of gets janky from there, but it, it's a big con. And this is kind of just great nature in general. However, other decks kind of hide this, but this deck has really low defense. It's very loud with this deck because it cycles and doesn't try to plus. So yeah, just low shield value. And there's nothing much more to say about it because you, your deck's a bunch of 5Ks, not a lot of 10Ks. Triggers, you're playing your, most of your triggers or you're using them for costs. So it's kind of hard. You just kind of have to kind of open your Sanctitude, get your draw PGs, have all your heal guards in hand. Um, however, that's just kind of most decks. However, this deck, I feel like it's more um, prevalent. With history collection format, this is more relevant. However, just our first grade three turn, if we went first, is kind of sus. Uh, that's just because there's decks that do way better with your going first grade three stride ups. That's just because, you know, there's some really strong going first strides. However, our deck is just make two excels, then more, which is good in the long run. But, you know, there's just so many explosive turns. So you just have to be careful if you can afford to ride grade three first, especially if a deck has a crazy stride up turn like Nova Grappler, VSR, uh, Katrina, Katrina. However, if you're smart about it, you should be fine if you know your matchups and know like what who strides into what. Though it's like a weird con, this is a crest deck. So if you don't open Hamskay's Teacher, you're most likely going to lose. However, with ride fixers, you're going to see Hamskay's Teacher 87% of the time post mulligan. It's kind of a con, but you know, it's a crest deck. So you have to you already know that going into it. Now that we've gone through all the cards in the deck list, uh, here's some key considerations I've thought about this deck or others have recommended to me. But first things first, here's this deck list that Deck Flare gave me. Uh, it uses the G-Belly engine, has the restainers with like Crayon Tiger and that stuff. Uh, so it's kind of more of a hybrid of the hybrid. I think this deck is trying to do too many things at once, so I can't really recommend it. However, if you want to try this and have a safer going first grade three turn, go for it. Next up is front triggers. They're very strong for this deck just because we are doing five attacks minimum by turn three. However, because of our trigger lineup and the way the deck is, uh, we're kind of forced to not run fronts because we want the stride crits so we have more grade threes to ditch because it does hurt us to ditch more than one card. Curious Pony being one of our main soul charge pieces, we can't cut that. Heals, you already know we need heals. Draw PGs, we're forced to use them because the main deck space is really tight and there's no good grade one PGs to run anyway now if i could fit in fronts i would if i could ever found a world where i could justify getting rid of stride crits then fronts would be easy inclusion in this deck however right now i don't see myself being able to fit in that and not feeling more consistent like i am right now this card i've been wanting to fit in for so long this card would fix so many problems however i don't know what ratios to change to fit this I want two copies of this and I'm still trying to fit it in. And that card is Tester Fox. No Researcher Fox, just Tester Fox. Now, the deck is really tight on space, so it's hard not having Researcher Fox, but because of the way the deck is, we kind of get away with not needing it. Uh, Tester Fox is also really good because you can bot deck any card and our deck thins really hard, so we can bot deck triggers. And we don't use a lot of CB, so the CB is basically free. Uh, he's also just a body on the board, is a 17k on a Septicon turn, he can be like a 27 plus. Uh, so he's looking really good, um, however just because of the way the ratios have to be, uh, it's hard to fit him in. Right now I'm thinking of trying to cut down a Hamdon down, maybe it's down on grade 3 searchers. Uh, card's really good, it is absolutely going to be in the deck in the future once I figure out what can I get away with. And kind of circling back to front triggers, if Tester Fox goes in, I think there is a world where those fronts do fit in because we have more grade threes. Here's four bit all. Uh, if Tester Fox goes in, I am kind of inclined to need to get the four bit all in there. However, it's already a struggle getting two Tester Fox in the deck, so I don't know where the third slot would come in. However, I am thinking about it. This next card is very cope, and you need a lot of things to go right if you do go into this card. However, I do think it's reasonable to mention just because of its ability, and that is Sage Saint Professor Big Belly. Purely, I am just thinking about him because he benefits from flipped up G units. However, the cons are you need to run two copies of him because it's a self flipper and you need an on hit to happen. Uh, and it does turn off our plant tokens, which are the kind of big things we do kind of want to give the ability to just because everything else is kind of tiny and you need to commit a turn. So the whole strategy with this stride kind of gets wonky because it wants so many things to go for it that it's not really worth with a deck that thins fast and wants to kill fast. This one will be really quick. Um, just vanilla triggers, D crits. Uh, 
a good consideration. Kind of the same explanation as front triggers. They get buffed by Cycloned. Cycloned is a card that is a major piece to this deck. So there could be room for it. In the past, when I first built this, I did run uh, D crits, uh, but it didn't really matter at all. If anything, I was just like losing the guard in my hand that I already have very little of. Next up, the tried and true Nova Grappler Destroyer Honolly. You know, everyone knows this card. Everyone loves this card. Uh, it's a card that you feel terrible putting in your deck, but if the opponent has it in their deck, it sucks for you more. Card's good, you know, everyone knows it. Um, there's just no main deck space. Uh, I would put in a couple copies if I wasn't forced to run Ride Fixer. In the past, along with the V crits, the Honolies were in the deck at one point. Uh, this was before Ride Fixers came out. Um, and this was when Honolies still cost you a CB to play. So, you know, I was really coping with this card. Uh, however, it doesn't really help the game plan. You don't want to remove it, but you don't want to retire it. So it's kind of eh. Um, does help you live though. If you really want to put it in, put it in. If not, you're not missing out. Lastly, is a card that I have to bring up because other people will. And it is this terrible card that benefits off many G units face up. And that is our GBA. Ah, look at that. Made when there were no Excel markers and this card's bad. <laughs> there's there's so many costs to this card. You know, the ditch too, it's already like a lot. You have to commit a turn, whereas there's other strides that have more pressure like Bala Earl, your second Septicom turn. Uh, freaking Fernagus looks better than this in all honesty, just cause it gets all those 4Ks. It's also very restrictive because you need to pick five rear guards in an Excel clan. So it gets really wonky and this card gives red text, so plant tokens get screwed by this. It's weird having a game plan where you want one card in your hand. Even though this is an aggressive deck, it's still great nature, so you're gonna have like a good amount of cards. Uh, so it's just like a weird, it's too janky for this deck. Um, the 40k and a crit doesn't really matter in today's Vanguard uh, when cards are swinging for however much. An OT can guard this very easily. Cards, blech, blech. No, we're not running this in normal great nature anyway, but I know people will bring it up because it's GV8. As he says in the SpongeBob narrator voice, in conclusion, this deck has a lot of potential. As I see, I have a lot of wants in the deck and not a lot of space to give. Deck is really fun though. I do like combo and aggressive decks, and this is a nice little refresh for me because I normally play uh, control decks. If you like great nature, you'll like this deck. If you like tokens, but don't have Neonectar, you'll probably like this deck. This deck, I wouldn't say it's a sleeper pick. However, I'm not gonna say it's underrated. It's kind of just in that weird, like, if you know about it, it exists. It's an idea in your head. It's the same as like, you know, Gize Narukami, where you get your five zero off swinging at you. At most, this deck is kind of just BSF deck if you really want to fit it in there. It's not really going to be a BCS deck unless we get some broken generic plant token makers. Uh, specifically, if we ever get one that's on attack, make a token. Thank you, Bushy. This is a local level deck. If you really want to have fun in BSF, bring it there. You shouldn't be taking this to BCS unless you become uh, Stephen Lee with great nature and are like, this is the deck. But yeah, this is a fun deck. Feel free to try it out. I really think you'll have fun if you do just kind of like this kind of play style, if you like great nature and just want some new flavor. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I'm more active on Twitter if you want to follow me there. I I kind of post whatever I want. Um, it's mainly Vanguard related. Feel free to follow me on anything, talk about it. I love talking about this deck and I'm always down to for uh, theory crafting. Um, so yeah, have a good one.